My mother always says that I was by far the most impossible of the six children and that I was very high strung and very difficult child. But she said the minute I decided to become a musician and sat down at the piano and practiced three, four hours a day, that it calmed me down. Everything changed in the house. You know, I later had a teacher who said to me, you know, after a while, you know, you wouldn't like anything to be a musician. And after a while, you'll find that you become a slave to music. And I see what he means, because what happens is that you get hooked on music. Two hours ago, this man was packing school lunches for his kids. This afternoon, he'll schedule fundraising activities for a growing music school. Tomorrow, he leaves on a European concert tour. Pianist Andrew Wolf is a man in search of balance and harmony, in life as well as in music. He's a performing artist, administrator, husband and father, and self-proclaimed hyphens of the vacuum. He balances the demands of a busy performance schedule with a second career as director of the All Newton Music School in suburban Boston, as well as the Bay Chamber concerts in Maine. At the center is Andy's family, his wife, Linda, and their daughters, Anna and Heather. Achieving balance and harmony among competing pressures is a challenge for many of us these days. To see this challenge from an artist's point of view can give us a special perspective, a sense of humor, of emotional investment, of joy and irony. It's a search for perfection that Andy Wolf describes as reaching for stars. in my life is returning each summer to our family place in Maine. My grandmother began coming here almost 50 years ago, and now it runs through all of us as a family, children and grandchildren. There are so many family and musical memories here. My grandmother, who had traveled all over the world, used to sit on the porch overlooking the ocean. We used to eat, all eat that out there and she said I've traveled all over the world I've been in Switzerland in the most beautiful places Switzerland France you you name it there's no place more beautiful than, than right here it's very interesting about my upbringing was that I had many musical relatives my grandmother was Leia Lubaschitz who was a Russian violinist my uncle, my mother's brother, is Boris Goldovsky, who is a pianist and opera conductor. And my grandmother's brother and his wife were Lubaschitz and Nemanov, a duo piano team. So there was a lot of music around and there were musicians around. And they were, it was, it's very exciting when a musician comes and how you hear music. It, 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 music either grabs you or it doesn't. In other words, what happens is people say, what makes a musician? And the question is, should I be a musician? Shouldn't I be a musician? If you have to ask, you shouldn't be a musician. If someone says, what, is, what does it take to produce a great artist? And I always say jokingly, half seriously, half jokingly, it takes a crazy parent. To be a musician is one word. It's, it's commitment. And a, a child, you know, can have so much commitment, but then he needs to be committed by someone else. You know, my grandmother, she was a very smart, true lady. She would use any possible mental way to keep me at the piano. She would allow me the day after a concert to take the day off. And when I was 16 and I was trying to sort of be independent, I played this concert up in Maine. I took the day after the concert off. She was happy. Everything was wonderful, happy, happy, happy. And then I decided I'm going to take another day off. You know, I took another day off. <laughs> 
things she started getting a little quiet everything was a little tenser in the house and then the third day I took off and you know at the breakfast table everybody was so tense my mother went out to the vegetable garden and in our vegetable garden we had a neighbor who was a retired banker and he used to come down and help and so the two of them were in the vegetable garden and after a while I was so tense at the breakfast table that I went into the vegetable garden the three of us are out there weeding the garden and my grandmother comes up and she looks around she always carried herself like a queen she looked around she had a thick Russian accent she said look at this a retired banker a retired violinist and the retired pianist she pointed to me I was the retired pianist. Of course, I was back to practicing later that day. A few years ago, I found that I didn't like being away from home doing solo concerts out in the Midwest, finding that you're in towns that you just as soon not be in all alone. And uh, tomorrow you're going to another town all alone. And when I heard that this job came up at the only music school, I decided that for once in my life I'd like to make a living and have a certain steadiness to my life. I had two children, uh, we had a home. I, I wanted to, to try to feel that I was bringing home the bacon and was a member of the community. I felt that I was good at administration and that I could do something with the school that it would be mutually beneficial. I'm now in my sixth year and I feel that there have been a lot of strides that we've made at the school and the, the enrollment has increased each year. I've added a lot of programs and, and my arithmetic way of looking at things has kept the school, I think, in a very solid financial basis. But I also feel that it is difficult to balance between two different careers, especially when one of the careers should be a, a full-time one. Art really demands every minute of your life. I think that everybody who's alive nowadays probably experiences similar conflicts. And anybody who has two careers or who is going down two roads certainly has these conflicts. There's no need for another solo pianist in this world. There's no need for another superstar. But I do feel that there is need for a fine assisting artist. That there are a lot of people who need this and there aren't many people out there that can do it well. I now have the great thrill and pleasure of my life to play with Isaac Stern. And it, for me, it's, it's a musical thrill. It's an, it, it means so much to me because my grandmother, when I was a boy, used to talk about Isaac Stern. She adored him and adored his playing. And in 1953, I was 10 years old, he played with the Philadelphia Yorks of the Brahms Concerto, and afterwards she took me back, and of course this, she knew him, they threw their arms around each other, and then I had a program and he, wrote, he gave me a signature in 1953, and I still have that program, and to me, I mean, that was unbelievable, and if anyone had told me that one day I would be playing with Isaac Stern, I mean, I told them they were crazy. He has an unending joy in making music. We look forward to much work together, mutually rediscovering some old works, learning some new ones, regularly enlarging our repertoire, both in music and in mutual friends. It's a nice association. <laughs> thing about chamber music is the communion with another human being. When you sit down and play with someone else, you cannot ignore them. And to play with them really well, you not only have to be aware of them, you have to be inside them. You have to feel what they are going to do 
even maybe before they know what they're going to do. The real excitement is to get a feel for their performance and to bring your performance to them. It's the most beautiful society. Spending your life reaching for the stars. That's what it's like. And you know, you go crazy after a while, reaching for the stars. You keep thinking, hey, I got one. Oh, I got one. And you open your hand and uh, you have nothing. And that's what it is. And that's why musicians are crazy. That's what you should expect in this life. 